Hey everyone and welcome back. Today we're diving into a mystery that's been bugging scientists for decades. Yeah, like why is the universe's expansion speeding up? Exactly. Yeah. You've probably heard about dark energy, right? The mysterious force that supposedly causing this acceleration. Right, but what if we told you there might be another explanation? Oh, now you've got me intrigued. Get ready, because we're about to explore the wild world of modified gravity. Awesome, and to help us unravel this cosmic puzzle we've got... Uh, I'm an expert in theoretical physics, and I'm really excited to dig into this. Fantastic. I've been looking forward to this one. So to kick things off, how did scientists even figure out that the universe is accelerating in the first place. Well, it all started with observing these exploding stars called supernovae. Supernovae, oh wow. Yeah, and these supernovas are like cosmic beacons, you know? Okay. By studying their light, we can figure out how far away they are and how fast they're moving away from us. So like a cosmic speedometer. Exactly. And what scientists found was that these distant supernovae were fainter than expected. Fainter. Yeah, which they means they were farther away than they should be if the expansion was slowing down like we thought it should. Huh. So instead of slowing down because of gravity, the expansion is actually speeding up. It is crazy. Uh, yeah. That is pretty wild. And this discovery was backed up by other observations, too. Like what? Like looking at the cosmic microwave background radiation. It's like the afterglow of the Big Bang. Oh, right. And also the way galaxies are spread out in the universe. All these different pieces of evidence pointed towards an accelerating expansion. Okay, so the evidence is pretty solid, but how does our current model of cosmology explain this acceleration? Well, that's where dark energy comes in. Dark energy. It's Good. this hypothetical energy that's everywhere in space. Everywhere. Yep. And it has this negative pressure, kind of like anti-gravity, pushing everything apart. So dark energy is like this invisible force fighting against gravity's pull. Yeah, that's the basic idea. But we still don't really know what dark energy is, right? Right, it's a big mystery. We don't know what it's made of or where it comes from. So that's where modified gravity theories come in, don't they? Instead of adding this new mysterious force, maybe we need to rethink gravity itself. Exactly. What if instead of dark energy, we just need to tweak our understanding of gravity, especially at these huge cosmic distances? Okay, I'm hooked. So how do we modify gravity? Do we just throw out Einstein's theory altogether? No, no, not at all. Einstein's theory of general relativity has been incredibly successful in explaining how gravity works in our solar system and even galaxies. Right, like how planets orbit the sun or how stars move in a galaxy. Exactly. But remember, Einstein developed his theory over 100 years ago, and we're still learning so much about the universe. So maybe there's room for improvement. That's what researchers are thinking. They're suggesting that maybe Einstein's theory needs a little adjustment when we're dealing with the immense distances and low densities of space between galaxy clusters. So Einstein's theory works fine in our little corner of the universe, but when we zoom out to the really big picture, things might need a tweak. Exactly. Think of it this way. Einstein's theory is the main recipe for gravity. But these modified gravity theories are adding a pinch of this and a dash of that. Gotcha. So it's like a cosmic fine print saying, hey, gravity might act a bit differently out here in the vast emptiness. You got it. Hmm. And even though these modifications seem small, they can have some pretty big consequences. OK, I'm on the edge of my seat here. What kind of consequences? Well, for starters, they could explain the accelerating expansion without needing dark energy at all. Whoa, really? So just by adjusting the gravity equations a bit, we can explain why the universe is speeding up? That's the idea. Wow. That's incredible. And it's not just about acceleration. These modifications can also change how galaxies cluster together, the properties of black holes, and even how the universe evolved in its very early stages. This is blowing my mind. So we're talking about potentially rewriting our understanding of the entire universe. It's a pretty big shift. But like any scientific theory, there are challenges and complexities. These modified gravity theories are still being developed, and we've got a lot more research to do. OK, so let's dive into those complexities. What are some of the challenges these theories face? Well, one of the biggest challenges is that these theories need to match up with all the observations we already have. Right. They can't just solve one problem and create a bunch of new ones. Exactly. And that's where things get really interesting, because as we explore these modified gravity theories, we start to find some unexpected predictions. Oh, like what? Spill the beans? Well, some of these theories predict these things called singularities. Singularities. Oh, those don't sound good. They can be tricky. Singularities are these points where our current understanding of physics breaks down. So is that like a sign that the theory is wrong? 
Not necessarily. It might just mean that we need to refine our understanding of physics to figure out what's really happening at these extreme points. So it's like those singularities are clues pointing towards new physics we haven't discovered yet. Exactly. They're like these tantalizing hints that there's still so much more to learn about the universe. This is all so fascinating. We've got these modified gravity theories that could explain the accelerating expansion. But they also introduce these weird singularities that challenge our understanding of physics. So where do we go from here? Well, that's where the real fun begins. We need to dig deeper into these theories, explore their predictions, and see how they match up with all the data we have. So it's time to put these theories to the test. Exactly. And that's what we'll be doing in the rest of our deep dive today. I can't wait. This is going to be epic. Oh, it's going to be cosmic. <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> you know, it's amazing how these modified gravity theories can help us understand how the universe changes over time. Right. Last time we talked about how these theories tweak Einstein's theory of gravity just a little bit. Exactly. And those tiny tweaks can lead to some pretty crazy stuff. Yeah, like a universe that expands faster and faster without needing dark energy at all. It's mind-blowing. It really is. And one of the coolest things about this paper is how it looks at how those modifications change the universe's dynamics. Dynamics. You know, like how it expands and how things like galaxies and clusters of galaxies grow over time. Okay, I'm following you. Yeah. So we know the universe is expanding and that expansion is speeding up. How do these modified gravity theories change that picture? Well, in standard cosmology, the one with dark energy, the expansion speeds up at a certain rate. Right. But these modified gravity theories open up other possibilities. Oh. Yeah. The universe could accelerate even faster or maybe slower or even go through phases where it speeds up and slows down. So it's like these modifications give the universe more options for how to move. That's a great way to put it. And this freedom is all tied to a special parameter that the researchers call alpha. Alpha. Okay. It's like a dial, you know, that we can turn to change how strong those modifications to gravity are. So alpha controls how much gravity deviates from Einstein's theory. You got it. And as we tweak this alpha, the universe reacts in some pretty cool ways. I bet. Like, what kind of reactions are we talking about? Well, for example, when alpha is less than one, we get these things called power law solutions. Power law solutions. What are those? Basically, it means the scale factor of the universe, which is like a measure of its size, grows as a power of time. So the universe expands at a rate that's determined by this power law. Exactly. And depending on what that alpha value is, this power law expansion can be accelerating or decelerating. Oh, I see. And remember those uh, tractor solutions we talked about before, where the universe tends to evolve towards certain stable states. Yeah, like those cosmic valleys that the universe likes to roll down into. Exactly. Well, for some values of alpha, those attractors describe an accelerating universe. Oh. But for other values, they lead to a decelerating one. It all comes down to where we set that alpha dial. It's like a cosmic tug of war between acceleration and deceleration, and alpha determines which side wins. I like that analogy. Thanks. So what happens when alpha is greater than one? Ah, well, things get even more interesting then. That's when we run into those singularities we mentioned earlier. Oh, right. Those cosmic error messages. Yeah, those points where our equations kind of break down and our understanding of physics gets a little fuzzy. So does that mean the universe hits a cosmic dead end? Maybe. Maybe not. Remember, those singularities could also be hints that we need to dig deeper and find some new physics. Right, those clues pointing towards something bigger. Exactly. So we've got accelerating universes, decelerating universes, and those mysterious singularities. Out of all those options, is there one that looks like the best explanation for the acceleration we see? There is, and it happens when alpha is exactly equal to one. Alpha equals one, okay. What's really cool is that when alpha is one, all those singularities merge into one point and the universe avoids those cosmic roadblocks. So alpha equals one is kind of like the sweet spot where everything works out. In a way, yeah. And what's remarkable is that for this special value of alpha, the universe always evolved towards an accelerating power law solution. Always. Yep. And the exponent in that power law is 3.75. Wow, 3.75. That's super specific. So by setting alpha to exactly one, we get a modified gravity theory that could actually explain the acceleration we see. You got it. But there's a catch. Oh, there's always a catch. What is it? Well, this fine tuning of alpha to be exactly one it's a bit of a problem for some physicists. What's wrong with fine tuning? Well, in physics, we usually like theories that don't require us to tweak parameters to fit the data really precisely. 
I see. So it feels a bit like we're forcing the theory to work. That's one way to look at it. Mm -hmm. But there might be some deeper reasons why Alpha should be one. Maybe there's some underlying principle we haven't discovered yet that naturally leads to this value. So it's like a missing piece of the puzzle, the one that makes everything fit perfectly. Exactly. And that's what makes science so exciting. Mm. There are always new mysteries to solve and new discoveries waiting to be made. I love that. So these modified gravity theories, even though they have some challenges, offer a totally new way of thinking about some of the biggest questions in cosmology. They do. It's a whole new perspective. Awesome. But these theories should have some real-world consequences too, right? Things we can actually observe and test. Yeah. What are some of those predictions? That's a great question, and that's what we'll be diving into in the next part of our deep dive. Sweet. Yeah, we'll be looking at how these modified gravity theories affect the way galaxies and clusters form, the properties of black holes, and even the cosmic microwave background radiation, that faint afterglow of the Big Bang. I can't wait. I'm ready for more cosmic surprises. Wow. This deep dive into modified gravity has been incredible. It really makes you think about the universe in a whole new way. It does. So these theories offer a pretty compelling alternative to dark energy, maybe explaining why the universe's expansion is speeding up. Yeah, they suggest that maybe we just need to tweak our understanding of gravity a little bit. Right. But you also mentioned that these theories have some observable consequences, like things we can actually measure. Exactly. Okay, so what kind of predictions do these theories make? What can we actually look for out there in the cosmos? Well, one area where these theories could really shine is in the formation of large-scale structures, you know, like galaxies and galaxy clusters. Right, the big stuff. Yeah. Gravity is what pulls all that matter together. Right. It's like the cosmic architect. Exactly. And the way those structures form over time, it all depends on how gravity works. So if gravity acts a bit differently at huge distances, like these modified gravity theories suggest, we should be able to see that in the way galaxies are arranged, right? You got it. And some of those models in the paper actually predict a different growth rate for structures compared to the standard model with dark energy. Oh, interesting. So if we see galaxies clustering together faster or slower than expected, that could be a sign of modified gravity. Exactly. It's like these tiny modifications are leaving their fingerprints on the universe. I love that analogy. It's like a cosmic detective story. And it's not just about how galaxies are distributed. These theories can also affect the properties of individual galaxies. Like their shapes and sizes. Yeah, and how fast they rotate. So astronomers could potentially use telescopes to look for these subtle differences and test these theories. Wow, so we could actually observe these effects. Absolutely. And there are already tons of surveys going on mapping the universe in amazing detail. That's so cool. The data from those surveys could help us figure out which gravity model is, right? Exactly. Okay, so that's galaxies. What about other things? You mentioned that these theories could even affect the cosmic microwave background radiation, that afterglow of the Big Bang. Oh, yeah, the cosmic microwave background. It's like a treasure trove of information about the early universe. I know, right? So have these theories been tested against the cosmic microwave background data? They have, and it's pretty interesting. Some studies have shown that certain modified gravity models actually fit the data better than the standard model. No way. So not only could these theories explain the accelerating expansion, but they might also solve some puzzles about the early universe. It's a possibility, but we definitely need more research. Of course, of course. And it's not just the cosmic microwave background. These modified gravity theories could also change how we think about black holes. Black holes. Okay, now we're getting really wild. Yeah. You know those super dense objects where gravity is so strong that not even light can escape? Yeah, those are some mind-bending objects. Totally. Well, these theories could affect how those black holes form and evolve over time. This is incredible. So we've got galaxies, clusters, the cosmic microwave background, black holes. It seems like these theories touch upon pretty much everything in cosmology. Yeah, it's a whole new way of looking at the universe. But let's be real for a second. These theories are still pretty new, right? And yeah. they're up against some tough competition from the standard model of cosmology, which has been pretty successful so far. So where do we stand in this cosmic battle of ideas? That's the big question, isn't it? Modified gravity is the new kid on the block, but it's definitely got potential. I'm rooting for the underdog. Me too. <laughs> the key is to keep testing these theories against more and more data and see what happens. It's like we're at the beginning of a new era in cosmology. Exactly. And we're lucky enough to be living in a time when we have the tools and technology to maybe revolutionize our understanding of the universe. 
Well, this deep dive into the world of modified gravity has been absolutely mind-blowing. We've seen how these theories challenge our ideas about gravity, potentially explain the accelerating expansion, and make all these amazing predictions about the cosmos. It's been a blast exploring this stuff with you. And to you, our listeners, thank you so much for joining us on this incredible journey. Who knows, maybe someday we'll look back and realize this was the moment when our understanding of gravity took a giant leap forward. Keep those cosmic questions coming. We'll see you next time.